kids, I want to set up, make sure I'm broadcasting on our local Discord. channel up um, uh, phone so I could read the comments if we have any if we don't hey that's cool too but uh yeah this is fishing merit sea or not merit sea but uh north Atlantic as you just heard of I played fishing merit sea actually 100% of the game we got the platinum trophy on PlayStation. I enjoyed it a lot. It had some issues. But from what they've done to this game, they actually cleared up a lot of the issues. They even tell us that we, they did that. You go over here to the home page. And hit the Fishing Bear at Sea button in the wiki. And it says they took the best features out of the game from... Or the major features out of Bear at Sea and ported them over to... Fishing North Atlantic and added upgrades to them. And kind of more or less built the game back from scratch. Honestly, I've been playing this game since Wednesday. I uh, bought it as soon as I found out it came out. Bug wise, I've probably got maybe 10, 15 hours in the game. And I've only found one bug. Just one. Kind of surprising. So I'm going to go ahead and show that off right this minute. Is after you buy your deep lines for your starter boat. You're going to want to come on down here and you're going to want to bait them. Now, if you hit the bait button, it's going to give you a one through, let's say five, because I've got five lines. If you hit that button to automatically bait all five of those lines, I've had the issue four times where it completely freezes the game up, locks it up. It doesn't blue screen. You just can't do nothing. I don't know if it puts it on like pause for amount of time. I don't know. I've hit the cancel out, restart the game. Issue I've always had is I don't save often. So my advice would be when you're baiting these lines up, go through and do it individually. Just click on it, hit the bait button. As for some of the other features that are new, everything that's done in the fish market is not expensive. Most expensive stuff for a starting brand new player is probably getting your better hook. And upgrades for your boat is everybody wants to upgrade as fast as they can. Which I'm going to upgrade the storage right now. $15,000 for another 6,000 pounds. That's great. Your engine upgrade was only 5,000. Which takes us from a slow little 10 mile per hour boat up to about 20. 
upgraded the radar because there are hidden ducks in the game there are hidden uh, boats in the game and that's fast travel points there's an autopilot feature in the game too so let's say you're doing one of those long uh, cargo missions where you've got to haul your cargo from let me build a map make this easy let's say they want you to haul it from here at Dennis Point and haul it all the way up here to Ingol now you can't fast travel but you can now set your waypoints like we've been able to do in Barrett Sea all the way up hit the R3 button set your speed on your autopilot and roll straight out here and get back to fishing which I'm going to set that up right now for when I leave but I don't want autopilot right the second because it's a little glitchy it likes to turn to the right and sometimes it smacks you up against the dock and then you've got to repair your boat we now can get crew which we've always been able to hire crew but you can have a crew member on your starter boat they're gonna help you haul in the deep lines I grabbed the cheapest guy I could get he was only 15 grand a year or 15 grand and it's Victor he gets 1% and all he does is haul me help me haul my gear in the bank loans are now set up in 10 grand well they've actually went up to 20 grand because I've got some extra money on me but they set up in increments that you could press this as many times as it'll let you press it but my advice is stay away from loans in Barrett C I was one of the guys that race through so I would start off with the starter boat get my bigger boat and just keep going till eventually I was doing the deep uh, trolling ended up in massive debt because the deep water froze couldn't pay my loan back and was pretty much screwed for the entire till the next season I do need to buy my services. Free towing. When you're starting the game off, because I'm not going to go back through the tutorial. You guys have seen people do it for the past eight months. Is they'll bring you out here, which is kind of cool, and you get to do some spear fishing off the swordfish. You can immediately replot the course back up here through the little inlet and go into port issue is there are these big ferries car haulers are just ferrying people from spot to spot in the very beginning of the game the ferry likes to go out park right next to you when you're fishing and then if you're fast traveling back, right about here in this choke point, it's going to crush your ship. You're magically going to slam into the ass end of it, bury the whole nose of your boat into it, or your bow of your boat into it, and you've lost your catch. You failed the mission. You paid whatever little money you had back into repairing your boat and being able to use your boat and now you have nothing and have to turn around and go back out and do the do your fishing again as for the map upgrades 
which makes this game different from Fishing Bear at Sea, is we no longer have the hot spots and the radars and stuff like that. This map is an ever-changing, always floating around map. The schools of fish travel a lot. It says that these swordfish were seen 10 days ago. I was just out here about 20, 30 minutes ago. They're still there. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're gone. That's why you want to upgrade your sonar. But for the map, what we could do is I'm going to head over here and we'll look to see what's out here. If I see more swordfish, we now can press the square button on the PlayStation, press fish type, and we can scroll through and see whatever fish we want. Now you're going to see lobster, you're going to see crab, you're going to see cod. We cannot fish those until season. But you could always stop selecting, drop it on real quick, and I'll push the wrong button again, as usual. Still getting used to the new controls. But now, you can set up where you've seen your fish, which makes it a ton easier. Also, because I can now go in here and check out the Wikipedia, you go now into fish seasons. If you have issues reading this chart, each fish is named down below and it gives the exact start date and finish date to every single one of the fishing seasons. So we can fish swordfish and tuna. You can get uh, tuna from July 1st to October 15th and swordfish from August 1st through the 31st of October. About that time you want to make sure that when October comes around you're ready to roll for November because in November starts the lobster, the crab, which is your big money because you catch a lot of them, and you want to also make sure that you've got the deep lines and stuff so you can set up for cod because money's king. And as you can see on the bottom of the screen, fish prices. These vary too. If you're out and you're doing nothing but catching swordfish, that $14 a pound is going to change. And if you go to the wrong port, like you go to Lockheed Port, you're going you're gonna to lose $3 a pound. Or you go up to Ingle, you still get your $14 a pound but it's a little bit more of a haul. But I was out here fishing for tuna. And I thought, well, I'll just head back up to Yarmouth and call it done. Found out $16 a pound. Lunenburg was $16 a pound. Locky Point looked real good in 1975. Ingold looked like it was still $16 a pound so that kind of sucked and then Digby looked like 18 I was like oh, I go up there but then I found Dennis Point $20 a pound shorter travel distance save me some money let's roll so I ran up here and did some sales also, if you ever want to mess with a YouTuber and they're streaming this game and you notice that today they're in this boat and tomorrow they're in a giant boat, ask them to see their finances page. Tell them to go to the ledger. This will tell them exactly 
everything that they've ever bought for the boat. One second, I got a cough. Sorry about that. But you can look and see where they sold their fish, how much the money they made, how many times they refueled. Well, I've refueled a lot because I bounced around to every single port to unlock the ports for y'all. And you could possibly see if it's going to show it. Where they taking out loans? See, I took out loans back on the fifth for ten gr for a total of thirty grand. That was the finish buying my upgrades and to um, hire Mr. Victor. Also, my advice with the tutorial in the very beginning if you're out there and you're doing swordfish um, spearfishing try to fill your boat as long as the swordfish is there just hunker down and get through it you want to try to get anywhere between 7 to 14 swordfish because that's going to increase the thousand dollars they're going to give you just for rolling out there and finishing the tutorial mission. I only caught seven fish and brought in forty-one thousand. If I'd have brought in fourteen fish, I could have brought in eighty-one thousand, eighty-two thousand. Well, now we're going to roll out here and. I'm going to get this thing turned around because I don't trust the autopilot 100%. Now for the autopilot. You push down on your R3. It's going to be the same thing on PlayStation, Xbox, whatever. You can set your speed. Right now I do 16 knots. I can turn that down up and down by pressing the uh, R1 stick. Push it up and down. Just like you would be to change the camera views. Take your hands off, let them drive. Due to the fact that this game is a water based game, you're not exactly going to do your 16, 20 mile an hour, whatever knots all the time. Water has friction, this is an Unreal Engine. It's kind of realistic. Another little graphical thing that they added to the game is cars. Yeah, I know it's a little thing, but it makes the ports now look like they're alive and there's people moving around on them rather than nothing. Oh, you stupid autopilot. I got a little too close to short. Do not hit that. There is an option right here. Enable Port Patrol. For players that want to play in a hardcore mode, turn off your fast travel, turn off your Enable Fish Helper, and turn on your Port Patrol. They will fine you for speeding. I got fined six hundred dollars because I refused to stop speeding. Another cool feature is now you're in your boat. You're cruising along. You don't want to constantly press triangle to come inside your boat and push buttons. You can now push down on the L3 and change your left screen. You can adjust your lights. So you can turn your lights on from here. You can call for rescue. You can mess with your crew. You can change your radio station, turn it off or on. You can check your equipment. 
You can even see how much uh, cargo you got on board. I like to keep mine on sonar. The weather looks like we're going to have a little bit of rain today. Kind of some 78% chance of rain with some choppy seas and some high winds. Tomorrow, partly sunny, partly sunny on Tuesday. Wednesday, we're going to have a beautiful sunny day. Barely any winds. Pretty much flat calm seas. Over on the right is your map. You press up or down on your D-pad and zoom in or out on it. With the, with the sonar, you press left or right, you'll op you can expand your radar or shorten it up. But enough of this autopilot. You, your autopilot will also save you gas because the game thinks you're driving even though it's programmed to drive for you. You can still fast travel. So, we're out here. We've got swordfish. We got some chop going on. I want to wake Victor up. And I want Victor to start baiting the buckets. Turn the speed up just a little bit. Don't want to go too fast. You go as fast as you want. I mean, you crank it all the way to max. And we tell Victor, throw it overboard. Now, I want him to do a squid. Roll out to the Mac to 150 yards, meters. Throw the pot. Do some herring. Now if you look on your left, you're going to see set deep line, haul deep line. When that set deep line goes from the gray to the darker color, that's when you can toss it, like now. Bait up another squid. Toss it out. We're going to bait up this last herring. As you see all the swordfish. There is a possibility that there might be some squid. The swordfish will still eat the squid. We eat the herring. But now that we're done with Mr. Victor, we'll put him back to rest. So as you see, he's going to walk back in and go below. What he does below, I have no clue. He probably sits and chills. Reads a book. Watches TV. Sharpens his knife. Who knows? But now we're gonna turn back around. Like you've done a million times in Fishing Bear at Sea. Or seen other guys do. And we're not gonna haul these lines. We're going to roll right past them. And then as you see with the chop, I'm bouncing around a little bit. And we're just going to roll down here to the end of our line. And I'm going to show off the other new feature that's in the game. Something we begged for. Oh god, did we beg for it. When it came to Barrett Sea, it was horrendous. 
They've given us the ability to fast travel on our boats, or speed up time on our boats now. In Barrett C, the only way you could speed up time was go back into port or burn a lot of fuel doing fast travel, set up waypoints all the way around your line, and just keep running around your line in circles. Or, so you had crab pots down, and you want your crab pots to sit for 18 hours. You had to sit 18 hours in the game and just stare at them. The issue with traveling out back to a port and coming back is it messes with your, uh, if you don't properly calculate the distance, the time there and back and fast travel, and the time on your lines, you go from this red color and as you're fast traveling it can go to the green which is good but not great to the blue which is the best time to fish to back to red if it goes back to red then pretty much you're not catching nothing you are wasting your time so we got a bite but I want these lines to turn blue, so we're going to anchor up. We're going to adjust this for, let's say, 17 hours. And all of our lines are now popping and banging and everything. So real quick, I'm going to grab Mr. Victor. Time to get his butt out of bed. Close that up. Hit that. We're going to haul this line. And we've got swordfish. The minigames kind of are okay. They kind of suck. I do more missing than I do hitting doing this. But it works. But as a starter, all you care about is making money. Because you want to get out of this boat and into either a long line boat where you can start catching some redfish, some of the silver hake, some of the other fish, or you want to stay in this boat, fish all the way up until. We've got uh, the money for a crab boat. And be able to go crab fishing during the fall and winter. Now, if you're a completionist player and you want to get everything and buy everything and find everything, there's some seven and eight month old videos on it. And that's all cool. My advice is take your time and enjoy the game. And if you want to rush straight through and grab everything, that's cool too. But don't be afraid to go back and buy some of the smaller boats and spend some time doing some other types of fishing. Because the biggest boat in the game, the most expensive boat in the game this time, is actually the big crab boat. And after we get done with picking these up, I'll go show you the biggest boat in the game, especially for crab fishing. I just gotta remember what port it's at. We've got three lines and only caught close to 3,000 pounds worth of fish. We're going to make money. We're just not going to make great money. I really got to find the tuna.
there are tips that you could buy while you're at the uh, ports too which are usually three days to five days old on the tips and they can tell you where you're possibly looking for a certain species of fish Now that we've got this swordfish, we'll go back up, we'll go to finances, fish prices. So, 14, 14, 11, yeah, we want to sell some swordfish, 1461, we're going to head back to your mouth. new thing is you roll out here and just fast travel to these points of interest now and it's just an instant teleport so you ain't got to worry about plotting courses and everything else that'll put you right usually at the mouth of the ports or just outside the ports And for my buddy Shred, Shredhead Gaming, look him up if you don't know who he is. Great YouTuber, great friend. The good old Bjorg boat, the starter boat from Fishing Bear at Sea, is actually in this game. It'll cost you 10 grand. You can only use four long lines, like 200 hooks, something like that. Yeah. If you want to go back and torture yourself, you can always do that one. Yes, I understand that no one's here. I do my live streams more as if people show up. I can talk to them, but if there's absolutely no one here, I use them as instructional videos for people to watch later. Yeah. I've always done it that way. Kind of a super small channel of only, I think, 29 subs. Sometimes I get five views. Sometimes I get. I've got a couple videos out there that have a couple hundred views. But if I can make this video slash stream and help somebody out, it's all good for me. Makes me feel a little better. Also, this game's eight months old. And with this game being eight months old on PC, console players kind of get the shaft a little bit, but it's like that on any port over. We, you know, they come out, they get the game in beta, they stream it for a month or two in beta, they complain. If, they're, if we're lucky, they fix stuff. Then they poured it over. And by the time we get it, everybody's already seen everything, done everything. But it's all good. I play Gold Rush. I haven't streamed nothing, haven't made any videos on it. And it's been out for four years. It just got brought over to console last month.
Well, yes, there's a little Bjorg. You can actually do lobster on it now. So you can actually make some money, but you're not really going to go anywhere fast at all, even with a max that agent. Well, what surprised me at being on the starting ports is boats like the deck stars are already ready to go. So if you can figure out a way to make a lot of money really fast, you can get out there and start doing some bottom dredging really quick. There's the good old Northwestern. It was, I think, the same crab boat, one of the same crab, no. I think it was in Barrett Sea, I'm not 100%. But now that I'm parked here, top my fuel off. I always top the fuel off, regardless of what you're doing. And I'm gonna head because I think the biggest crab boat's over here. The Arctic Catcher or something like that. It's a big boat. It's kind of pretty looking. I know they got the saga in the game. In that boat, if you ever follow the uh, show Deadliest Catch, it's kind of had some cursed captains. Jake's actually doing pretty good with it, but the captain before that had his own private issues that became public on the show. That's probably why he doesn't own the boat no more. Nope. But I was watching that gentleman last night. Said the selfies in the game. And it's somewhere along the shoreline. All word boats from the first game are in this game, or at least most of them. The Luna Star or some of the others are in the game. There's one up here. There's one somewhere along this edge. There's another one up in here. I think there's one hiding in there. But there are a bunch of them throughout this area. I know I went and grabbed the one that was hiding in here. And yes, gentlemen, that doesn't look right. I know. There's another one right here in this little little beach area. But they've kind of put them hidden. If you get a bigger ship or boat I should call them boats because you put a boat on a ship, you can't put a ship on a boat. It's a Navy thing. But you can grab up all those boats. There are 39 POIs, points of interest. Each point of interest is either a new ship or it's a new uh, fast travel point but here's the biggest crab boat in the game it doesn't look like anything you're going to see on Deadly's Catch but it's got a nice big crew nice big quota, huge fuel tank probably burns a lot of gas and for fishing bear at sea I can't understand how anybody could do the 126 pots. I always fished with a max of 10 to 15 because by the time I got turned around and got ready to get to my first spots, they were already going from green to blue by the time I was halfway down the line. And by the time I got there, they were already starting to turn yellow again and then red.
but there are a lot of nice boats. I mean, 120, 10,000 hook long lines with a crew of six, so you could have people cutting, freezing, or gutting, freezing, catching, and hopefully all you have to do is drive the boat. I know they had issues in Barrett Sea that sometimes you had to go down there and do the catching because if you didn't have people in the exact spot that they wanted you to have them you couldn't uh, just drive the boat you always had to have somebody else do it is this game a grind yes no lies it's a grinding game but is the grind as bad as it was in Barrett Sea? I'm going to say no. Because at one time I had close to $300,000, but I didn't have a good check on where the boats were. So I wasn't able to go get those boats and quickly upgrade. But here's the Scarlet, aka the Saga. Little five man crew, which means you're not going to be paying out a ton of money to crew members on quotas. 50 pots, not bad. But I know for a fact, as long as RNG. Or I should say RMG is working properly for me that there are nice big schools of crap I gotta read that's another issue I have is we cannot get enough bait to stay out. You've got to rebait your lines every time you go in. But like I said earlier in the stream that uh, even though it has an up arrow where it's supposed to be able to rebait all your lines, don't do it because the game will lock up, it'll freeze, it'll be yeah, nothing but bad. Just go through and set it up on your own. I mean, it's not that bad. It's just pushing a button and up and down. And now they're all rebated. Oh, fuel. Because I do not want to get caught out without any fuel. Fuel on this little boat isn't bad. Actually runs pretty good. Compared to some boats. I know fishing bear at sea. The biggest issue I ever had was running out of gas. That and the long grinding. get back here and yes I could have just fast traveled there and then bounced straight up and been done with it but we're going to kind of old school it let's check the sonar see if there's anything rolling Let's see how it's going from there. Oh, we got two now. So, Victor, aka Bob, get your ass out of bed.
and let's get rolling. Now, even though herring is better for tuna, you still catch tuna on squid. You catch tuna on herring. They're both interchangeable. We don't want to get these lines out. Get some more money coming in. And I want to get this done and try to move up in boats. What I'd really like to do is go back in a little while find uh, the YouTube video I was watching last night, find out exactly where the selfie is, and go grab that boat. Victor, you're not sleeping. Just to let you know. You're going to stay up for 18 hours. If I don't get to sleep, you're not sleeping. Now whether or not I do more content on this game kind of just depends on the number of views I get. Depends on if I get any likes. If I get any subs, even subs out of it. And I could do more on it. Or it might just be one of those periodical things where I find something new in the game or find a new bug or whatever. I'll stream. Or make a quick video on it. Are the graphics AAA? You know, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost Recon, Breakpoint. No. This is a small studio making an independent games. And sometimes the indie developers find their little niche and do better than the big guys. Call of the Wild. I started my channel out on Call of the Wild. And it's a hunting game. They do their game, their hunting, better than the hunting in Red Dead Redemption. Now, do the models look better in Red Dead Redemption? Absolutely. They've got a couple million dollars that they can drop into their uh, programmers and their artists to make things look better. But the gameplay sucks. We're in Call of the Wild. Gameplay's great. Graphics aren't bad. They're better than some of the other hunting games out there. They found their niche, and that's what they do. This game's a industrial-type fishing game. You want to play a standing-on-the-shore, look-at-pretty-scenery fishing game? Play Fishing Planet, it's free. But what I think they've really done good in this game is the ocean. I care less that the fish look a little cartoony, but... The boats react to the water the way boats would act to water in real life. You don't just stop on a dime. You're going to rock. It's going to be unstable. Or like right now, it looks pretty flat and I'm really not moving anywhere. I'm doing less than a knot in reverse. Less than a knot forward. Just riding the waves. But the Unreal Engine, uh, using the water setup, 
is from what I've heard from other guys who have attempted it, it's extremely hard. So my hat's off to the developers of this game. They're great. They found their niche. The game works. It's so not bug ridden. All the bugs that they had during beta for PC are pretty much fixed. All the bugs they had after the live release are pretty much fixed. And on console, like I said, I've only found that one bug. Where you need to bait your lines one line at a time, not all at once. Look how long my lines have been set out there. Yeah, we're going to do another 18 hours. Let's go catch some fish. And it looks like the second line doesn't have anything on it. I'm going to pull it anyways. I don't want to come back and get rid of it. I did have an issue where I laid my lines out. I was only sitting IRL two minutes, sped up the time of the game, and I had eight lines in the water. All eight lines disappeared and found out that they were destroyed well there's nothing to destroy them I didn't see no boat come over the top of my lines I didn't see nothing they were just gone so I took the money loss and was just running around doing the travel missions re-deliver stuff to the ports Got bored with it, decided I was going to do a stream, and just did a complete reset. Didn't hurt nothing. It's only a couple hundred thousand dollars. You can make that up pretty quick just by fishing. Probably gonna haul these lines in, go sell these fish off, call it a stream. If anybody's got any questions or anything, or would like to see anything, or me try anything, holler at me down in the comments section. Would be appreciated. The YouTube algorithm thing. I like and dislike. They're the same thing. So people think they're hurting your channel by putting dislikes. It doesn't really do nothing. All it does is take it off their search. When they're looking for videos, it just takes them off their search. What helps the algorithm is mainly views. If you do a video and you get a thousand views then it bumps you up on whatever game content whatever you're doing it'll bump you up it's like the girls over on twitch doing the uh, hot tub dancing It got recommended on my page, and I'm like, I don't even, it's not even what I want to watch, but it's there because the views went up. So, a bunch of guys started memeing it. And dressing up in bikinis and having their beards and wearing bikinis and looking like fools. It's hilarious. My thoughts are pretty much if 
it's something you enjoy and something you want to do, do it. I'm not going to doubt anybody for trying to make a dollar these days. As long as you're doing it legally and you're safe and you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, make that dollar. Well, we're back in port. Made another 35 grand. Wasn't the greatest. But it's money. And those that showed up during the stream, I appreciate y'all. Those who are watching this later, appreciate y'all. If you liked what you like, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hey, hit the dislike. Want to see more content? Hit the subs. You need to know anything or want to ask anything or tell me how good or how dumb I've done, just, hey, put it down in the comments. I'll check them out. I'll respond to them. Other than that, appreciate y'all. This is Jeremy G. Gaming. Have a good day, night, morning, whatever it is for you.